Hello, and welcome to Venvi Art Gallery's interview with artist Michelle Phillips. We are currently in the midst of Michelle's solo exhibition titled In the Light of Day, running from September 2nd to October 9th, 2022. This is Michelle's second solo show with Venvi Gallery, with this body of work emphasizing the simple beauties that decorate our lives, exemplified through her use of natural light, reflections, and colors. We are grateful to have gotten the chance to chat with Michelle about her current show and learn more insight about her as an artist. All of the pieces mentioned in the interview are available for purchase in the gallery and on our website, www.venviartgallery.com. We will also be hosting a closing reception for this exhibition on Friday, October 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. And with that, please enjoy the interview. So thank you so much for joining us. Hi, you're very welcome. All right, awesome. So um, to jump into things, can you tell me a little bit about what the title of the show In the Light of Day means? Well, show titles are always kind of tricky to, to come up with. Um, but when I agreed to do the show, like maybe like a year ago, um, I was kind of trying to think about the, the thing that, you know, tied everything together. And I think that my paintings have always been about sort of you know, recording light and color and how light affects color. And so I was trying to come up with something that, you know, had to do with the idea of light um, and how light affects that we, the way that we see things. Um, so, and I think at the time too, I was kind of thinking about like, you know, light kind of has connotations with like, you know, goodness or like truthfulness. So I, I think, in a sense, I'm kind of trying to connect the idea of light with like illuminating things that maybe we wouldn't normally see or that we would maybe pass over in a really quick moment. Mm -hmm. And in the light of day, like all of my paintings are painted in daylight. So um, working in natural light is really important to me. Like I never, unless it's raining outside and it's completely gray for the most part, I don't really use any studio lightings. So I'm always working in natural light. Yeah, awesome. Um, that kind of ties into another question I had um, just about your artistic process um, as a whole. How do you go about setting up your still life scenes um, and just the beginning process of starting a painting? It's usually just starting off with maybe like one, one or two objects that I make some kind of visual connections with, um, whether it be like you know, the size of a blue glass dish with, um, I don't know, a particular tablecloth or um, I'm always kind of like thrifting and searching for those depression class pieces that are in my paintings too. So mm -hmm. sometimes it might just be that I found one of those and I'm anxious to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like usually the way that I start off my paintings is like I said, just with like one or two objects and I'll, I'll put them on my table and kind of sketch things in and maybe paint one or two things. And then I usually kind of get more ideas about what else is going in the painting and what kind of like story is coming out of it. Yeah, and it, it's kind of tricky working that way too because since I do paint so many things that are see-through, that are transparent, I have to kind of pre-plan that because if it, if I have some kind of complex you know pattern laying under this glass dish and the the dish sort of like abstracts the pattern that's kind of something that's hard to add in later so um I don't know if I make it hard for myself sometimes by doing that but I never really know what the painting is going to look like um like when I start off I just start off with one or two things and then just kind of keep adding on things until I feel like the painting is complete Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, I've definitely noticed um, in a lot of the paintings in the exhibition, you use similar objects in different ways throughout. So it's cool to kind of go through the gallery and be like, oh, I remember this like glass from a different painting, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. And I, I, I think sometimes like it is like a color thing. So sometimes in a composition, you know, I'll have one empty corner and I think about like, okay, like what color is gonna be right there for that size, for that part of the composition. And that's when I do kind of <laughs> maybe pull in other things that I've already painted. And I'm like, that's the perfect size of that color. I'll stick that there. 
Um, speaking of color, I think one of the really overarching features of the exhibition is your kind of cohesive color palette. All of the paintings seem to really fit together with these color palettes. Um, and you kind of already mentioned a bit of how you are kind of picking out the colors when you're starting um, the process, but how do you decide on these color palettes and what draws you to the colors that you choose? Every, this is a question that I think I, I get asked a lot. Like, you have such a specific color palette, why? And it, I think it's always a, a question that I've kind of had trouble answering. Um, I guess it's kind of like an automatic thing for me. Like, these are the colors that I like. These are the colors that, you know, I, I've always been interested in a lot of pastel colors. Um, I don't really do many, like, you know, very deep, rich darks in my paintings um, because they always have been sort of about like a softness, um, you know, a quietness to the painting. So I, I don't want any like really screaming dark things in there. Um, so, you know, I, I think the colors have something to do with that, maybe more about like the quietness of the paintings. Um, you know, co my colors, I, I manipulate my colors a lot too. So like no colors on the canvas or panels for the most part are anything that comes straight out of the tube. So like I do a lot of mixing until I get the right color and usually a lot of variations of one color. Um, but, you know, I also think that I'm really attracted to the kind of like vintage sort of like, almost like old Florida vibes in a way. Um, and I, I think that's something that I've expressed through color in that way. A lot of pastels, a lot of pink. Um, so, and I, I think that light being specific to places like Florida, or I spent a, quite a bit of time in Hawaii. Um, I spent, you know, a portion of 2020 uh, in Virginia and the light was really different there. Um, so I think the different locations with different lightings to sort of affect the way that I think about color. Yeah, definitely. Um, in a more broad sense, what draws you to the still life setting as a whole? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> definitely the overarching theme of my work. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, people ask me like, oh, do you paint portraits or do you paint other things? And yeah, you know, sometimes I do, but it's a lot different painting like a person, you know, a person is alive and, you know, has a soul and a spirit. With still life, you know, you're painting things that, you know, are somewhat inanimate, you know, and they're still. So, and with me too, painting from life is so important to me. But, you know, I like looking at things that are still, that are not going to move. Um, and I also think that there's a lot of potential in almost like curating different objects together to think about telling a story. Um, you know, and, and stuff and things, you know, we all have stuff um, and it all has different meanings for us, you know, culturally you know, memories, nostalgia. Um, so I, I think that there are, are a lot of different associations that people can make with things um, that are in still lives, you know, maybe then like for me anyway, um, then for me, like painting a portrait or a landscape or something else. Um, like I said, not to say that I don't paint those things, but um, that is kind of my main interest in still life. Yeah, I definitely noticed in a lot of, especially the bigger paintings that you have, that they, it almost seems to tell a story and that there's so many different parts that on a first glance, like you said, you just kind of see it, but then looking into the detail, you can see all of the different aspects of it, which are really cool. That's the fun thing about paintings. They're not, they're not like pictures or photographs, mm -hmm. you know, like you look at the whole thing, but then, you know, you know, especially if you have a painting hanging in your house, um, there's just little things over time that you're like, I did, I, you just noticed that and you've had this painting hanging in your house for, you know, two or three years. Um, so I don't know, they're kind of like nuanced in a way. Yeah, sure. It reminds me of a lot of times when people come in and see the front three pictures on display um, mm -hmm. in Florida finds, I'm pretty sure there's the little cat in the corner. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I always hear people being like, oh, look at the little cat after just like taking in the whole picture. So it's cool to just find the little things in each of the paintings. That cat was kind of a, a last minute addition too. That's, you know, I had kind of that empty corner up in the, the mm -hmm. painting. And I like to reserve those empty corners, like looking out the window, because I always think like, oh, I'll put something interesting up there. But, I, you know, I don't know what it is when I start off. And the last place that I was living, we were living in an apartment before we bought our house. And there were a bunch of cats running around the apartment complex. And there was one that would always kind of come up to our door and hang out. And so I was like, oh, I'll paint that cat. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the other part of still life that is really interesting for me is I spent a lot of time in grad school thinking about the connection between the domestic space with the connection of, of femininity and not necessarily just being a woman, but women's connection with the domestic space. Um, you know, like throughout history, the domestic space has been thought of, you know, as a woman's place. Um, and historically, a long time in painting, still life was thought of as that lowest genre of painting. Um, so, you know, I, I thought a lot about that in grad school um, and spent a lot of time exploring still life for that reason. And I think it's that interest has never really left me. Um, another thing that I think a lot about in my work since I I paint from life. So I'm never painting from photograph. Sometimes I make little things up for, but for the most part, I'm sitting quietly and I'm looking and I'm translating what I see into my paintings. And I think that we just live in a really fast paced world where <laughs> we don't have a lot of time to sit down and just stare at sparkles, you know, on a pink glass plate that the sunlight is creating. Um, so I've always thought a lot about mindfulness um, in connection with painting and sort of like, you know, how can we slow down a little bit to appreciate beautiful things? Um, it sounds like a kind of like simple thing, but that's always what I've thought about with painting is you know, how can I slow down, you know, in my life, but also how can I create paintings that other people can look at and kind of slow down themselves at? Because there's a lot to digest in the paintings too. You know, you look at it at first and you think like, oh, okay, that's a painting, that's a still life. But, you know, when you continue looking, like you may see more details in the reflection on the glass or what's happening in that little corner space. And is this a tabletop or, you know, so I, I like to kind of think too in my paintings about having things look kind of like attractive and normal, but at the same time, having some like kind of uncertainty about spaces or setup in the work as well. Um, in, in that kind of idea of slowing down a little bit. Backpedaling a bit to you as an artist as a whole, um, what initially interests you and led you into the art world when you started painting? Um, I mean, I think just how much you want to paint. Like I started painting probably in, I, I did my bachelor's um, in art and art history. Um, but I, I tried a lot of other stuff and I don't think at that point I was really like, I didn't really feel like it was like my calling at that point. Um, it wasn't till a little bit later, um, a few years later that I started painting a lot. I had gone on a, um, an outdoor painting workshop in France. Um, oh, very cool. In probably like 2015, that was the first one that I did. And I really didn't know how to paint. You know, I, I showed up in France with all my paints and I sat down and I did this immaculate drawing with all these details and um, of this little like French house with a like a water spout thing. And the painting teacher came over to me and she was like, okay, now cover it all up. You have to paint it. And <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> um, and I think about it now, you know, um, with painting, you, you work with big areas and then you sort of simmer down to the little detail stuff. Um, so anyway, I, I think throughout that, that couple of weeks that I was in that workshop, like in a very short amount of time, I started like piecing things together, like, oh, that's like how I take that. And 
it was like sort of this challenge that just, I, you know, I was so like energized by trying to figure this out. And ever since then, I think I just, you know, it's always been a really important thing to me. And eventually, you know, I think all my friends and family saw my painting and said, you know, like this probably isn't a hobby for you anymore. <laughs> and at that point you just keep doing it and, you know, you just become an artist. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, so kind of in that realm, uh, your first solo show at Venby was a few years back. Mm -hmm. How has um, kind of your artistic process or how you think about art changed since that first show with this new exhibition? Um, I, I think like the base layers are the same. Mm -hmm. um, like I, what I was talking about, the idea with, you know, the still life and the connection between like the domestic space and femininity, you know, with all the colors and, you know, the flowery plates and things like that. And then also the idea of mindfulness and slowing down, um, you know, probably the difference now is the paintings are, are more complex at this point. Um, I think I have begun to think about sort of like broader topics, um, that are happening in my life and sort of like in our like society and our times as a whole that you know have kind of creeped into the painting so like the painting behind you um like there's a little newspaper clip with like a for rent sign you know that was the point in like my in our like time over the summer where we were contemplating like buying our first house and trying to get out out of being a renter and like just the whole thing with the housing kind of crisis in the past, mm -hmm. you know, couple of years with COVID too. So I think some of these big ideas of like what's happening with our economy and our health and, and like the global pandemic and us being at home. I think the idea of, of being at home too has taken on new explorations for a lot of people. So I, I think all of that stuff has sort of like, you know, added on top of the base layers of those original things that were in my show in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know how you've mentioned uh, specifically about the COVID-19 pandemic influencing uh, this work, especially in the two paintings, Pandemic Reflections 1 and 2. Um, mm -hmm. Do you wanna go into a little bit more detail about those paintings specifically and how those influences are visible in the work? Sure. And I, I think it's something that kind of just, I didn't really set out to do it. And I, I'm sure that every artist at some point, you know, could say, well, my work has been influenced by the pandemic because our all of our lives have, you know. Um, but in the idea of home, like that was the point that we were living in Virginia. And um, there was one day that I had set up a still life. And this painting is actually not in the show that I'm talking about because it's not one of the best, but it was kind of a learning painting. Um, and I, I set my still lifes up usually on a, a glass, a sheet of glass, a tempered sheet of glass with a white like layer underneath so that it, it's almost like a mirror. So whatever's going on outside the window kind of gets reflected on that. Mm -hmm. At the time though, I, I didn't really have that reasoning. I just, I liked the color of the glass. Um, I liked that it was like shiny. Um, but I was, you know, sitting there painting a, an apple and a bowl and a pair of like pink glasses. And I remember looking at that glass in between the objects and seeing the neighbor's house reflected on the, the glass. So this is the kind of stuff where I'm talking about like slowing down. Mm -hmm. I had been working on that painting for, you know, a couple days before I even noticed that the neighbor's house was reflected on that surface of the glass. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try painting that. That'll be cool. Um, and then I started thinking more about it, you know, just about this idea of being at home um, and like, what do we see in our houses and right outside of our houses? And um, that was in 2020, like beginning of 2021, where really I was working completely from home. Um, you know, you didn't really leave the house that much except for to go, you know, to the grocery store and you know, to the doctor or whatever you needed to do. So, um, so I did from there on out, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to include that in every painting. It's kind of like a, like a symbol of that kind of thought process. Yeah. There's other things too, like, um, like the antibacterial soap that is painted in the, 
the one painting um, with the yellow plate. And then the other thing that I had thought about too with the newspaper clippings was adding like the headlines of the COVID-19 cases. And then um, the other thing that I was thinking about too is the depression glass that I like to paint. That history of that glass was that it was like a purchase incentive for certain products like bags of flour, or like rice or oatmeal, that there was a piece of that glass inside because it was relatively inexpensive to make. It was just like pressed glass um, and it would make people wanna purchase, you know, household needs like that after the great depression. Um, so I started kind of thinking about sort of the connection between the time of the, the 1919 influenza, that pandemic and like the pandemic we're in now and the economic concerns that we have. So I was like, well, that'd be fun to kind of try to connect those times. So I dug up some, I, I spent quite a bit of time trying to find some advertisements for those rice or oatmeal box containers. Um, so I had found some in an old book that I ordered and then you know, took them out of the book and set them up in the still life. So those oat advertisements, um, I thought would be kind of an interesting connection with like some, of, like especially the COVID headline because that's kind of connecting those two different times. Yeah, that's so neat. What other influences maybe in a more broad sense, whether it be other artists or um, genres of art kind of inspire your paintings? I mean, definitely still life and the whole history of still life painters. Um, some, and sometimes it's maybe not even like a certain stylistic thing about still life painters. Sometimes it is just about like the view of the space. Um, like if you look at, you know, really old, you know, still lifes from like 1600s, 1700s. Um, it's really interesting to look at sort of different like gendered attitudes like towards the domestic space, whether they be masculine or feminine. Um, there's a painting I talked about in my thesis that was um, painted by a French artist in like sometime like 1670 or something. And um, it's like set up in such a way that, you know, it, it almost looks like it would be a painting of like, you know, heroes and gods, you know, painted on a big scale, like kind of the old, you know, master, you know, bigger is better kind of a thing. Um, and, but, you know, at the same time, when you think about a still life, it's like, that doesn't really make much sense for a still life. You know, still lives are things that are part of your everyday routine of your domestic space. So you look at things like fruit, like, is that just a decoration or is that something that like, you're gonna eat later on that provides nourishment to somebody? Does it acknowledge like the tabletop surface? Um, so that's definitely something that um, I think influences my work a lot is thinking about a more, you know, contemporary idea of, of the use of our home space, um, you know, through gendered ideas. Um, you know, it's very different now than 16, you know, 1600s, 1700s. So, um, you know, I like to look at a lot of the, the older still life paintings and just kind of see what things that they were including and how certain objects maybe were like cultural symbols or you know what what that meant because it's easy to look at like a water pitcher and say well that's a water pitcher but you know sometimes like it had a certain print on it that you know signified a certain like economic class or you know a wealth status so I think I like to look at stuff like that um you know I also like to just look at painters that think about, you know, working from life and, and working um, in that sense of time. Um, you know, when you're painting, it is almost like you're recording, you know, a specific moment in time and you're encapsulating it into one space. Um, so there are some painters, there's a painter, Janet Fish, that I really like. Her, her paintings, I've she paints a lot of like clear, transparent glass. So I've definitely looked at a lot of her work for more, maybe more technical mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, One more question, just to kind of wrap things up. Uh, what do you want visitors to take away from this exhibition as a whole? Um, you know, whatever they're, you know, kind of 
however much time they're willing to spend at the paintings, you know, um, and what kind of things that they want to contemplate. Um, there's definitely no like one size fits all answer for that. Um, I was saying earlier about how different objects, like maybe could bring about different memories for different people. You know, one person might look at an orange and think like, oh, that's an orange, I eat that every day. <laughs> or somebody might look at that and think like, oh, it makes me think of Florida or I don't know. So I, I, want, I want the interpretation, I guess, to be left pretty open. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the most specific thing would be um, just slowing down a little bit, slowing down to, to look at things and, you know, find beautiful moments of, of light and color um, and how that can kind of bring a sense of, of calmness or stability. I love that. Thanks again for watching our interview with Michelle Phillips. Please join us for the closing reception of her exhibition, In the Light of Day, here at Benvy Art Gallery on Friday, October 7th, 5 to 8 p.m. This collection is currently on display, so also feel free to stop by and check out Michelle's paintings, as well as a variety of other works from our artists during our operating hours, Wednesday through Sunday, 1230 to 530. Thanks again to Michelle for taking the time to talk with us, and we hope to see you all in the gallery very soon.